Hello everyone and welcome back to another new album video. We're now on week 39 and this week we're taking a look at 143 or 143 by Katy Perry. Uh, first release September 20th, 2024. Some notable tracks off this album include Lifetimes, Woman's World, um, I'm His, He's Mine, and Crush. I'm uh, just going to get this right out of the way, right at the beginning of this video. Uh, this is not a very good album, uh, but listen to it, um, kind of like the date came out, and it's just all kind of very, um, very unremarkable, I think. Um, I'm generally a pretty big fan of Katy Perry. Um, I, I really liked um, Just One of the Boys, uh, Teenage Dream, uh, Prism were all very good albums. I think kind of after Prism, uh, stuff started going downhill, like as far as like in quality of the music at least with like uh, Witness and Smile not being very good. Um, this one, not very good um, either, I don't think. Um, I think I liked it a little bit more than, um, than Smile, though. Um, Smile didn't really do it for me either. This one, at least it's kind of like, this is a compliment and also kind of not. It's a short album. It's like maybe like 30-something minutes. So um, it's short, so it's definitely, it doesn't like overstay its welcome. But there's just nothing really on the album that really kind of stands out. I think like Lifetimes might be the only track that I actually like might go back to. Uh, Woman's World was like the first single off the album. And um, that one didn't really do it for me either. I remember like uh, she announced this album. And I was kind of looking forward to it because I was like, okay, she's had like a, cu a rough couple albums like with, um, with Witness and Smile maybe this will this album will kind of turn it around and unfortunately i don't think it has and a lot of critics uh seem to kind of agree there um some critics say it's like the worst album like ever made i don't know if it's if I, if I would go that far uh it's pretty bad um overall but it's definitely like i think i've probably have easily heard worse albums probably even this year like albums i listen to and maybe don't even remember listening to so there's probably, there's definitely worse albums out there. This one just is not particularly good. But um, I have some notes here about the album. We're going to go through those and then we'll uh, get to the track list and um, all that. So like we said, uh, released September 20th of this year. Uh, this is Katy Perry's uh, seventh studio album. I think it was like Kate Hudson was the first one. I think it was called Kate Hudson. That's her actual name, I think. Kate Hudson, Just One of the Boys, Teenage Dream, Prism. Then there was um, Witness, Smile, and this. So yeah, seven. Um, like, I think, let me see, um, Teenage Dream, I think she kind of peaked there, um, uh, maybe Prism, Prism is also still pretty good, uh, really good actually, but, uh, not nearly as good as, uh, Teenage Dream or Just One of the Boys. I listened to both Teenage Dream and Just One of the Boys, um, uh, earlier this year, and I actually might like Just One of the Boys a little bit more now. It's, like, actually grown on me a little bit more. I think it was, like, Teenage Dream, and I would rank them Teenage Dream first and then Just One of the Boys. But lately, I've been actually enjoying Just One of the Boys more than Teenage Dream. Teenage Dream is still uh, an amazing pop album, like pure pop, like great album from like its time period. Um, this one here, uh, 143, is probably just going to be forgotten about probably very quickly, unfortunately. Uh, not really unfortunately, because it's not a good album, but I, I kind of feel bad for Katy Perry for her you know, like, had, you know, like a, like a run of three pretty good albums, really good albums with uh, her, well, I will say, like, her, her, like, with just one of the boys, and then Teenage Dream, and then Prism. Those three are, like, I think easily her best, and then kind of downhill from there. But, uh, let's see here, the themes of this album, apparently, it were self-love and empowerment. Um, I think that th those themes are a little bit kind of, well, the empowerment theme, um, if you just listen to the music, it's it's fine, but a lot of people were criticizing her for choosing to work with Dr. Luke after all of the kind of stuff that's come about come out about him, and uh, you know Kesha going after going um, against him for like a sexual like assault and things like that. So um, it's definitely kind of. But she's worked with him in the past, so maybe that's kind of like the justification. I'm not really sure, but um, also people working with it's the music industry, people are going to be problematic, so I can't really necessarily fault her for working with Dr. Luke, but uh, at the end of the day, it's still kind of a bad look. So I, I try to be a little bit more objective, like, you know, separate the art from the artist kind of thing. 
but I think overall, still a bad look to be working with uh, Dr. Luke. There's definitely plenty of better producers out there. The production on this is not anything like remarkable, and there's a ton of producers on this album. Let me actually just bring up some of the producer lists. Like I think like Max Martin's on one song. So producers, according to this, are um, Circuit, Dr. Luke, Aaron Joseph, uh, KBZ, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, Malibu Baby, Vaughn Oliver, Rocco Did It Again, and Stargale. So just a ton of producers. So that, like you could probably easily remove Dr. Luke from the equation and have the album be, at the very least, the same, maybe better. Not really sure if it would improve the sound of the album without him on it. But again, definitely a choice to uh, work with him after all the stuff that's come out against him. But if that's who Katy Perry wanted to work with, that's who Katy Perry wanted to work with. Again, trying to be objective. And I probably personally wouldn't have, if I was in her position, not wanted to work with Dr. Luke. But that's not my decision to make. So um, there's that. Let's see what we have here. Um, three singles, I think, have been released from this album so far. There's Woman's World, Life, um, Lifetimes. And I'm His, He's Mine. This is the, according to reviews, the worst album, like, at least of hers, that's been reviewed. Um, I think I like, like, there, there's some stuff on there that's, that's, that's okay. Like, Lifetimes, I think, is a good song. But it's just not necessarily bad. It's just, like, forgettable. Like, passable at best kind of thing. Not an amazing um, attempt, but also I've definitely heard worse. Um, other pop artists have come out recently that I think are just kind of, um, you, you know, kind of like filling in like the void, I guess. If, if like, like she was like on top for a while and, you know, like things go up, things come down, new artists come out and kind of become the hot thing for the, for a while. Um, other artists now, I wrote some down here, um, like Chappelle Road, uh, Charlie XCX, Billie Eilish. Sabrina Carpenter, uh, Taylor Swift, even though she's been around for a while, I think have all had, you know, like better albums recently um, and have kind of uh, changed the pop scene. Like, I think the stuff that worked for Katy Perry in 2010, unfortunately, no longer works. Um, and I think that's kind of like some of the production on this album feels kind of antiquated at times. But um, even though, like, like I said, like um, one of the the albums I listened to this year that I didn't love was the Tortured Poets Apartment by Taylor Swift, but that's also probably better than this one. Um, this one, at least one for three, is short. Um, Tortured Poets Apartment is like an hour, like per side or for the standard release, and then the um, what was it called the uh, the anthology. So a very long album overall, but probably a better album compared to this. But like I said, we have just tons of other pop music singers coming out lately that are just been kind of on fire and unfortunately i think um it's kind of like uh K katie perry kind of had her time and now that's it's passed unfortunately but um let me see the the reviews also compared a lot of this album to sound like sounding like it was like written by ai or composed by ai it, I, I can kind of see where they're coming from just because like the music is there but it doesn't really, like, resonate. It doesn't feel like there's, like, anything really to it. It just feels like the production side of it just feels like a bunch of kind of, like, random, like, music, like, thrown together. Um, it didn't, like, unlike the Torture Pro, which is probably the first time I listened to it, didn't, at the very least, this album didn't cause headaches or anything, but it just feels like there's not a lot to it. It's just very, very, very basic. Um, a lot of reviews called it kind of boring, or forgettable or like lifeless. There were some interesting quotes here. Let me bring those up about just kind of the the album on its own. Let me see here. Yeah, they said uninspired, forgetful, lifeless. Um, there was one review. Uh, formulaic was another um, kind of way to describe it. Another critic says um, basically that it's like very, like I said, formulaic um, at best. I'm just trying to bring up uh, flat was used a lot a uh, limp very for like just kind of um a um just a definite downturn in quality over at, at the very least over my the three albums that i kind of go back to which are um tda stream prism and just one of the boys a definite downturn there but we're going to bring up some of the review scores as well 
Um, Metacritic has this at a 34 out of 100. And it's apparently the lowest, the ninth lowest rated album and the lowest rated album, uh, female album of all time on that site. I think that might be a little bit hyperbolic, but not really sure. So a 34 out of 100 from Metacritic. All Music has it at, it looks like a one and a half out of five. Two out of five from the Art Desk. Uh, Clash has it at a, um, let me see here, five out of 10, so just average there. Guardian has it at a two out of five. Uh, Independent has it at a two out of five. Two out of 10 from the, um, the line of best fit. Music OHM has it at a two out of five. Uh, NME has it at a uh, two out of five. Rolling Stone looks like it has it one and a half stars out of five. And Slant has it at a uh, two out of five. So um, some averaging reviews to basically low to average kind of across the board. Generally, like a lot of two star. I think like the best one was maybe like a five, five out of 10. Uh, but we're now just gonna move into our track list. So track list here. Uh, let's see, album is 33 minutes and 34 seconds with a total of um, 11 tracks. I guess there is a Target exclusive that has, um, or Target HMV edition bonus track, but we'll get to that in a moment. I just listened to the standard edition on um, Apple Music when it came out. Um, and then, before we actually get to that, there's just a ton of musicians, a ton of producers on this album, and it just almost feels like it's the kind of the saying of like too many cooks there's like uh for example i'll just read this musician's list here uh you have katie perry uh lucas um goth gothwald chloe um angelides hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly 20 with savage kim petras dochi kbz jid uh jad jord Darb darblos hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly uh ts lucas sunberg uh cricket star gale um kalo uh sunberg and Thomas um, Anderson Drabbles is, is basically just like the musicians that are like playing instruments and all that. Um, you just have a lot of different musicians, a lot of different producers to where it feels like there's definitely uh, too many cooks working on this. Or the fact that it's like you have all these producers um, and musicians and the album still is not particularly good. That doesn't really say a whole lot there. But anyway, back to the track list. Uh, track list or track one is Woman's World. That was the first single off of it. Uh, that was released back in like June or July, maybe. Um, it immediately got kind of panned, kind of rightfully so. It's not a great song. Uh, track two is Gibby Gibby. That features Twenty One Savage. Track three is Gorgeous, which features uh, Kim Petras. Um, I'm Him, He's Mine, which features uh, Dochi, is track four. Track five is Crush. Uh, track six is Lifetimes, um, probably my favorite track on the album. Um, and it's not an amazing track, but it's the one that I definitely remember liking the most when I listened to it, uh, the first time I listened to it. So uh, track seven is All the Love. Track eight is Nirvana. Track nine is Artificial, which features J.I.D. Track 10 is Truth. And track 11 is Wonder. And then the 12th bonus track on the Target Edition is uh, He Has a Heart. There's another bonus edition on, um, if you get the, um, let's see here, the Web Store exclusive has No Tears for New Year's as a bonus track on that version. But uh, overall, not a very good album. Um, like, not every album that we cover on this series is going to be going to be incredible. Um, but that's part of kind of just like listening to new music. Sometimes you find something you like, sometimes you find something that you don't. Didn't love this one. Uh, definitely a kind of like a weak spot in her discography overall. But I definitely think she has some very solid albums. Um, I would probably skip this one and just listen to like Teenage Dream or uh, just one of the boys or Prism if you're into it. Um, those three are definitely much better. But uh, that's going to do it for this video. We'll be back again in a week with a whole new album. No idea when that's going to be just yet, but we'll be back in a week with that. So uh, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one. See ya.